Hi, parents and ABA therapists. A lot of times, um, it's a struggle to get the child to sit during the session uh, or do any activities you're asking of them. It could be either in an ABA session or a parent trying to um, complete a homework with a child or complete any activity that may not be very preferred by the child. So how do we get children to sit with us? Um, we have to build rapport and we have to do something we call pairing. So pairing is basically you're conditioning the child to associate you with something positive. So if you're a new ABA therapist and you're working with this child who every time sees you will run away, every time you try to bring all these toys and activities to him to sit and play with them, he runs away and he doesn't want to do anything. Um, it's very important to assess what this child likes. Um, you know, it, it, does this child like um, physical activities? He likes to climb on things and run around and um, jump. Or he's, is he more of a visual person who wants to sit and look at different pictures and play with uh, maybe by watching videos or do puzzles? Um, so it's really important to know your child uh, if you're a parent or an ABA therapist. And once you know what they like, you can engage them in you know whatever these activities are and that's a first step in therapy where you are getting this child to like you uh, and uh, you're trying to develop something we call instructional control you are trying to be in control of the environment even though the child doesn't know that um, you're not giving instructions left and right but you're simply playing with this child with whatever they like to do and as you start you know um, re building this relationship with the child, then you're gradually uh, able to provide instructions, feedback, praise, uh, giving reinforcement, and so forth. So the first uh, few sessions, uh, you really just need to know this child, play with whatever they like, uh, and provide as many reinforcers as you can. It could be stickers, it could be uh, praise, and you're not really requiring this child to do anything specific or engage in a very specific activity. Uh, all what you're really doing here is uh, giving uh, unconditional reinforcers uh, attention, playing with whatever they want. If the child likes to sit on the floor, you're going to be you know, sitting on the floor with them. If they like to run around, maybe you'll do some physical activities with them, maybe uh, play catch or hide and seek or something like that where they're uh, in, engaged and happy. The next step usually is to get them to do what they're asking them to do so you can start the teaching process. And that could be through, uh, you know, uh, using what they like to start the session to get them to sit. And the transition from what they like to something that they may not like um, a lot should be gradual. So this time you're going to spend in doing a non-preferred activity should be much less than the time you're going to spend doing whatever they like. So the transition from um, pairing or building rapport to actual session needs to be gradual. You can use a timer. You can use a lot of visual aids, such as a visual schedule for the child to know what's going to happen next and when do I get my reinforcer and when do I play with my preferred activity and for how long. So all these things are very important for the child to uh, be able to sit with you and work with you knowing that you know they're getting reinforcers after the uh, activity they have to do knowing that they're going to spend time playing with whatever they like such as a tablet or watching tv or listening to music um, it's very important for them to know what to expect and also uh, it's the first phase which is a pairing phase is very important for the child because then they'll associate you with positive reinforcement and you wouldn't be uh, something they're going to try to escape every time they see you it also it's very also important to um, jump from something they like to something they may not like much and back and forth. You don't want to have all the session working on things that they don't like or something uh, that are or the things that are challenging for them. You want to uh, have a variety of activities available and ready for them. Uh, timer again, visual schedules really help children stay on task and um, because they're motiva motivational and they kind of make them aware of what's happening next. So I'm going to do this, and then I will get my tablet time. So I'm happy. I'll complete this uh, because I know what's happening next. But if, for example, you give the child an activity and tell them to do it, 
without giving them any idea what's happening next or how long they have to do this activity for, they may easily get up and leave because this activity you're giving me may be very hard. I'm not getting any help. You're not giving me any visual help. You're not telling me why am I doing this? What am I going to get out of this? And what's happening next? But um, if you uh, keep reminding the child that you're working for a tablet or you're working to get um, candy or you're working to uh, collect stars and once you get five stars, you get your tablet, that's very motivational for children because, again, they know they're getting something out of what they're doing. And, of course, uh, this time when they're actually working with you, you can teach you know, uh, them and work on their goals, whatever that be. Uh, whatever that may be. So again, uh, it's very important to build rapport, spend good time in pairing yourself with something positive. Uh, you want this child to come to you when you enter the home. You don't want them to run away. Um, that may actually um, also uh, be needed every now and then. So maybe a child, you know, seemed to be happy with you and working with you for a week or two weeks. And then starts again that every time he sees you, he doesn't want to work with you. You have to understand that maybe your enforcement was not consistent. Uh, maybe uh, the activities you're giving him to work on now is becoming much more challenging and the time you um, spend doing these activities might, might, may be more than the time you spend giving reinforcement. So you want to reassess the situation, see where where is this kid at, uh, uh, what does he want to do, and uh how many goals you know he's been working on maybe just take a step back and try to build more rapport with him uh, do more pairing and then go back to instructional uh, control so again very important if you're working with a new child to spend that time if every, every kid is different some kids may take two sessions some kids may take two weeks so it's very important for you to uh, assess uh, make sure you also understand what are the things that they like. So you may interview the parents and the parents may say he like a list of things, uh, but when you use it with him, he doesn't seem really interested. Uh, so you want to assess yourself the situation by observing this kid. What are the things that he likes to uh, go and look at? What are the things that they spend the time, most of their time doing? Uh, and then use these things to build rapport. Thanks for listening.